Hello everyone, hope all is well. My name is Justina and I'm the founder of We Rule. Thank you for joining our next IG Live session for our segment called Friends of Friends. Um, as a reminder, we usually do these to check in with entrepreneurs and really people with cool careers who are doing amazing things. Today we're being joined by Sabina Klimek, who is a diplomat. So I'm super, super, super excited um, to check in with her. Please let us know if you can hear us and we'll begin shortly when we connect, which we'll see. Yes, and please let us know if you can hear us because this is, you know, IG Live, so sometimes it takes forever. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sabina, how are you? Hi, <laughs> Long time yeah. no see. <laughs> That's true, long time, but I'm very happy to see you finally after, I don't know, two, three years or something. Yes, 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 yes. And a lot has changed in the world. A lot has changed, um, you know, with your career. Um, so I'm super, super excited um, to catch up with you. Um, yes, last time we saw each other was when Sabina, you can talk a little bit about that role in a second. Uh, but Sabina was stationed in New York City and she was working for the Polish government. Um, so we'll talk about it in a second. But yeah, we met at an event that she was hosting. And, you know, we kind of like uh, kept in touch a little bit here and there. So super, super excited to have you here. Um, so can you just kick it off with just like introducing yourself, just letting us know what you do today? Sure. Um, so my name is Sabina Klimek. Uh, I am Polish diplomat uh, and uh, I'm actually diplomat for business. I work with trade. So I'm a trade uh, officer, trade commissioner. I help uh, Polish and international businesses to get together, to get along together. So when we met in New York, that time I was head of uh, trade and investment section of Polish Consulate General in New York. Mm -hmm. And currently I have uh, the position of consul uh, for business and trade, uh, consul of economics uh, in uh, Istanbul in Turkey. So I just uh, changed the country, but still doing the same. So I'm still working with uh, Polish businesses that want to go internationally and uh, investors from other countries. So currently I work with Turkish investors that uh, want to come to Poland. Um, I've got also a degree in business. Uh, I have PhD in economics and uh, I specialize in my research and in my scientific uh, work uh, in uh, women entrepreneurs. So in uh, women business. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember yes. uh, you were writing the paper about female founders, right? When we met, I just remember that. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Um, so so you know, I'm kind of combining this role of uh, diplomat and uh, researcher. And uh, actually, it works fine because uh, it gives you uh, two perspectives. As a diplomat, I just do my diplomatic work. Uh, but uh, as a scientist, I can do research in a certain fields. And I really... Uh, enjoy doing my research uh, in the field of uh, women, women entrepreneurs, and also family businesses. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's, that's very interesting um, that you said that. So I wanted to ask you about little Sabina. So can you tell us a little about where you came from and, you know, how you were as a child? Like, do, mm -hmm. so the things that you did as a child, do you think they are still like present in what you do today with your career? Because sometimes like I always like to say that in every single live that, you know, if someone wanted to be a dancer, then they probably love music and they probably be end up being a dancer, you know? So do you see any correlations between, um, you know, your childhood and where you are today? Uh, very much. I mean, as a child, there was something uh, what scared me very much. And uh, it, uh, it was very much in my mind. I just didn't want to be average. Mm -hmm. I was just doing everything because maybe because I just uh, grow up, uh, I was born in 1980. It was socialism in Poland. So I still remember those socialistic times in Poland. I remember empty shops. Mm -hmm. I remember queues to buy something, you know, some food or some like toilet paper. I, I remember that, you know, I, I really lived that time and uh, I was facing uh, that situation. Uh, and I also remember changes that happened in Poland. So I remember 1989 and uh, suddenly the free market. So uh, actually <laughs> all those times, they are very much in my mind. I have got very happy childhood uh, because I grew up uh, in a, a small town, which is called Helmschlonski. It's very close to Katowice. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, between Katowice and Tehe. It's southern part of Poland. 
and uh, it's very industrial area of Poland. Uh, but uh, the the town is very tiny. We have got like six thousand people living there. Uh, but I really love this place. I still love it because everybody knows each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I like all my friends and teachers and and everybody. It's in such a small town. You really feel very safe. You really feel happy. You've got friends everywhere. And uh, this is how I remember my childhood that, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I had got garden, I had got grandparents that were living with us. I had got my family. So we didn't really travel a lot that time. So I remember that, uh, yeah, we did travel, but uh, within Poland mostly. So mm -hmm. we were just visiting during the holidays. We were visiting Polish mountains. We were going to Polish sea, etc. So and castles, right? I used to do that as a little girl. There's a lot of castles in Poland. Exactly. <laughs> and Krakow and everything. So there are many beautiful places in Poland that you can enjoy. And uh, I remember that uh, my childhood was, was very, very happy. And um, due to my parents and my family and everything. So even though it was socialism, we still had got a quite comfortable situation that we actually managed to have quite, uh, well, on, in this time, a normal life. But uh, also there, there was something that uh, actually um, uh, to be where I am here now, it's actually a huge, huge uh, work of my uh, mom and my dad because they actually allowed me, they asked me if I would like to learn English. Mm -hmm. And I was 10 that time, and I remember that uh, I, I really wanted to learn English, and uh, they, they actually uh, sent me for those classes, because there were additional classes, it was not at school, in, at, in a primary school we had got German, but I was attending additional classes, I was also learning how to play piano, and I was going for tennis classes, but also English, mm -hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed English so much, so then when I was choosing my high school, I also uh, have chosen high school uh, with a profile, uh, with English profile, so actually now I can say that the language uh, opened uh, my mind, my doors, and uh, the possibility that uh, were in front of me mm -hmm. uh, in my future life, because then I could travel, I could travel to, to the US, I could gain some experience, I studied abroad, so actually uh, just because I learned, I know that now English is so uh, like common for everybody, and mm -hmm. young, you know, my child, my daughter, she's five, and she speaks fluent English, and now she speaks Turkish, and uh, she's so fast <laughs> with Polish those languages. Polish probably too, right? Yeah. Of course, yes, Polish is yeah. her mother tongue, so, so Polish is just normal because we speak yeah. Polish. Uh, my husband is also from Poland, uh, but, but she's absolutely like amazing, and, and she's totally native because she was born in, in, in the US, so we are just uh, uh, making sure that she's not losing language, but here she's also attending British school, and she's learning Turkish, so, uh, but, but you know, uh, uh, during my childhood, that was not normal to, to speak mm -hmm. English. It was not common. It was not uh, usual. Uh, you know, my, my generation, they also spoke Russian and, and German. And, and English was not really something that everybody knew. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why now it's, it's so like normal for everybody to know this language. It was not before. So uh, because I had this chance I, I had this possibility to to learn this language uh, it opened so many doors for me later on mm -hmm. and there is one another advice that i'm always uh, telling to people uh to uh, always like um make sure that you are um, really using the chances that you are getting mm -hmm. because very often we are getting so many uh, possibilities or so many um um uh, opportunities that are coming to us so we just have to really make sure that we know how to make use out of it and that we are really using and that we are noticing them mm -hmm. so this is what I have done you know I was trying to use the opportunities that were coming to me so when there was a training I was attending attending those trainings where there was like a trip somewhere I was trying to go there where there were like additional workshops I was attending the workshops uh, so I was like, for all my life, I was keeping myself very busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, also like beginning in the childhood when uh, my parents were asking me, okay, would you like to play tennis? Yes. Would you like to play piano? Yes. Even though yes piano, to everything. Was, <laughs> yes for everything. Even though with piano, I was not really like my sister is so much better than me. And uh, my, my husband now is so, so much better than me. Uh -huh. But even though, you know, I, I played, you know, I didn't exactly, enjoy it that exactly. much. I know it now. 
but uh, somehow you know i was doing many different things and uh, i think that uh, that also uh, made me uh, mm -hmm. kind of uh, richer in in my experience mm -hmm. so like the advice that i could give from my childhood and for everybody just you know use and try to see the small opportunities that are coming uh, and uh, that are showing up because very often we as a people we are looking for big things that are going mm -hmm. to happen and that are we are waiting for those big opportunities that are coming and we tend to do not uh, notice the small things that are coming and uh, that actually could be you know leading us to big events in our life i so i love that, that it's basically like take the baby steps so it's like crawl before you walk and walk before you run and things will come together right that's true that's true but sometimes uh, as i said i know many people who are just waiting for this big wow for this big opportunity and they are not noticing you know the small opportunities mm -hmm. that are around you that you can participate as i said in a conference that you can go for a networking uh, event where you can meet maybe somebody who will be you know very helpful to you so you need to just uh, go outside uh, look around and find those small pieces that will make a huge picture uh, for mm -hmm. you Okay, okay. I agree with that. That's wonderful. And by the way, disclaimer, I might just be blurred for a second because my phone just told me that like it's something with five minutes for Instagram. But just uh, if I go blurry for a second, just everyone just stay, stay sure, put. I will, keep, <laughs> I will keep talking, you know, I will not. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Talking so FYI, if we break up for a second, I'm not gone. I'll be right back. Sure, so, sure. The next thing is, um, so you are a diplomat, right? Like, so when you're studying in school, is there like a degree to become a diplomat? And like, what can you do to become a diplomat? Like, how do you even decide that? Sure. I mean, um, it was maybe different. Uh, going back, you know, to those ideas of uh, taking those opportunities, of course, if you want to be a diplomat, um, there is a special school for diplomats and every country has got those kind of trainings. So depending where are you from, there are different ways of being, you know, becoming a diplomat. Mm -hmm. Usually you need to graduate from the university. I mean, you have to graduate from the university. You have to know languages. It also depends on the country. In Poland used to be that you have to have two certificates from two different languages and mm -hmm. the one has to be uh, on the level of B2 and the second one has to be on the level of C2 and uh, now I think it's one one language necessary and then um, in Poland we've got something what uh, we called um, uh, the um, school for uh, diplomats and this is school by Ministry of Foreign Affairs so you need to apply there you need to get there you need to pass the exams and then you are employed by Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. this is this is one path but there is also another path that I have chosen mm -hmm. um, I'm very you know American with my approach to to the work to the job so uh, I haven't been diplomat for, for all my life because before I was a journalist Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to work for Polish TV station. I used to work for Polish uh, TV, for Polsat uh, and uh, public TV. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was my previous career. Uh -huh. And before that, you know, I worked for business. I was working for American corporations. So it's, it's not that all my career was always diplomacy. Uh, mm -hmm. I just changed that, you know, as real Americans are changing the yes, profession yes, 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 every yes. eight years. Mm -hmm. So I'm also changing my professions mm -hmm. and I changed my profession several times. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I just, uh, after studies, I studied um, uh, in Poland, I studied in Finland and in Scotland. So mm -hmm. I did a Master of Science um, uh, at uh, un University um, um, of Economics in Katowice. Then I studied at Polytechnic in Finland. I did my B Bachelor of Business Administration there. And then I went to Scotland and I studied there at the University of St. Andrews. And mm -hmm. I, I studied, by the way, with Prince William and Kate Middleton. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, no I was the same time that they were doing their Bachelor and I was doing my Master. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I saw them graduating. Uh, they just graduated half a year before me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was uh, exactly the same at the same time. And after my studies, I decided to go back to Poland. 
And uh, when I was in Poland, I just started my career in international corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked for Hewlett Packard and uh, I worked for Deloitte Business Consulting. And uh, in the meantime, I just uh, won a TV show that was called Entrepreneurship uh, women and I just got offered to work for Polish TV station. So as mm -hmm. I said, you know, say yes to the opportunities that are coming to you. So I said yes to these opportunities. Yes. And, and so I love that. I feel like it's like one message I'm getting from all this is like, you're not scared. You're like, this is an opportunity. It's amazing. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. So this is what I have done. Maybe, because, well, I was not scared. That's true. But you know, uh, you have to have kind of confident uh, to, to, to act like that. And also, well, um, let's, you know, to be honest, I didn't have any responsibilities that time. I didn't have family. I didn't have baby. I was single. I didn't have husband. You know, I could do whatever I wanted to do. And this uh -huh. is what I did. And uh, so I changed and I started working for, for a TV station. And I was working for those TV stations for uh, um, uh, around five or six years. And then I started cooperating with Ministry of Foreign Uh, they were actually looking for uh, people who are heading, you know, the, 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 the business sections. And because I studied business and I also in the meantime worked with business as an advisor uh, for, for several companies, even though I was a journalist. Um, so I had got, let's say, uh, experience that was mm -hmm. kind of useful for me in my uh, future work as a diplomat. So I just combined all those experiences in business, in, as a journalist. Uh, you know, as a journalist, you are quite good with communication, you know how to talk to people. So it, let's say that all this experience that I gained during the previous years was very, very helpful to work for me as a diplomat. And uh, I started, uh, I started mm -hmm. my training and preparation period in 2012. And then 2014, I started my work as a diplomat in New York. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it was not from the beginning. I just uh, changed my career. And uh, Again, you know, I said yes to the opportunities, but I have to tell you one thing, mm -hmm. because when I was uh, in a high school, I was just thinking that it would be so nice, you know, to, to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. When I studied uh, economics, I was just thinking that it would be so good to work for those big international companies. When I was finishing my studies, I was just thinking that it would be so good to be a diplomat. So now <laughs> I can say that actually I managed to try everything and uh, I enjoyed it all but uh, now it seems that uh, this kind of adventure I hope uh, will be for longer currently mm -hmm. this is our second post uh, so we changed to New York for Turkey and um, and uh, it's well let's say it's a good uh, change because I love America I love New York I just I've got so many friends there and I felt so comfortable there and it was amazing, amazing time that I had there uh, during my, uh, during my... Um... I know, I remember you kept on doing so many events all the time. <laughs> like, I feel like the Polish community here in New York was alive when you were here. And now they don't do as much, to be honest. So you have to come back. <laughs> many people yeah. said that. <laughs> you, yeah, never, okay. you, you never know, you never know. Yeah. As we say in, in Turkey, inshallah. Uh, so I changed, you know, Turkey, uh, I changed New York for Turkey. And uh, I have to uh, say that, you know, we, we like it here. We enjoy it here also a lot. So because as Istanbul, is, um, Istanbul is so um, uh, similar in, in a way. It's also very crowded. Very, uh -huh. very, very so crowded. So like New York, right? <laughs> Just like New York. I think that traffic jams are much worse than New York. Really, really. I don't know if this is possible, but yes, it is possible. <laughs> it's very crowded. But um, also, um, uh, it's so lively. It's like 20 million people living here in Istanbul. So Istanbul never sleeps, mm -hmm. just like New York. Just like there New so, York. So many events and so many things going on uh, every day. Um, and um, even though, you know, the pandemic really uh, stopped many things and, and changed many things as well. Mm -hmm. However, uh, still, you know, the, we, we enjoy the place very much. Turkish people are very nice. Uh, I started learning my Turkish and uh, I just passed two exams. So oh, nice. Just... So you're probably learning with your daughter. I mean, you're probably teaching yes, her a little Yes, you know, we are, just, yes. we are just competing with my daughter. But I, I mean, she's so much better. But I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm doing yes, my yes, best. Yes, slowly, slowly, but surely. So you know what? I have a question for you. Like, right, I always tell people that 
I come from Poland. I grew up in the Poland in the 90s, right? I came to America for eighth grade. Um, and Poland is literally just like 99.99% Polish people. It's Catholic. Yes, we travel a little bit. But you don't really experience in Poland a lot of culture from around the world unless you travel, right? And when I came to New York City, I literally have like two Polish friends. And then that's it. And everybody else, I'm just so curious about other cultures and other people that everybody else is from around the world, right? Because I'm naturally like, passionate just about learning other people. But like, how did you go about that, you know? Um, and you know, you go from country to country, like, how do you adjust to the culture? Like, how do you find out the do's and don'ts? Um, how do you learn about that? And you know, is it important if you travel to places for job or, you know, for fun? Well, I mean, uh, you have to kind of like it. Mm -hmm. There is no other way. And, uh, <laughs> we really enjoy it. So for me, you know, this, uh, uh, there are pros and cons of everything. And there are pros and cons of being a diplomat too. So as a diplomat, uh, uh, you travel, you meet new people, you, you learn new culture, you, you learn new experiences. And this is so, so, so amazing. But in the same time, there, there are, you know, also cons because uh, you are all the time, uh, let's say on, 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 on the um, luggages, you know, you are always with your luggages. We are, you are always moving you never <laughs> down. Uh, you've got very much, uh, uh, you, your life is very much uh, unexpectable. Um, you don't know what's gonna happen next. And um, uh, there is no settle down. So this is something mm -hmm. what, however, for me, you know, this, this excitement is about moving, it's about packing, it's about getting into a new environment, it's about meeting new people. I really like it. I really enjoy it. And, you know, it, it makes so much fun uh, for me. So uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, uh, how you do it. You just do it. I mean, uh, you have to enjoy it. Once you enjoy it, it's nothing difficult in it. You know, you learn new languages. You uh, learn new, um, uh, you, you taste new food. Um, you meeting new cultures i mean it 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 makes your life so uh full you know mm -hmm. it's so fruitful and uh it just it's really amazing experience however as i said you know it's not easy because now we have to move with all our, our family you know it's not only me who is moving it's also my husband it's also my, my my daughter and it's also school for her and we know that that in the future she will really have fruits from that because she will uh -huh. be knowing languages and she will be speaking uh, uh, different languages. She will be having like great experience. She will be very- And she'll have a unique story to tell, you know, about how she grew up, you know? That's so important. That's yeah. true, that's true. Because, you know, she's only five and she was already living in three countries. She was in the US and she was in Poland. Now she's in Turkey. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's definitely, it's, it's very, very amazing experience for her. Uh, however, as I said, you know, uh, th there, are, there are cons, you, you can't settle down, you are all the time, you know, you're thinking not to buy too much because you know that then you have to pack it and then you have mm -hmm. to send it and then you have to give it away or, or, or just throw it away uh, because it's not good to have too much to, or too many things. Uh, so it, 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 is, it is easy and it is not easy. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, how do you, you, you just, you know, you just have to you just have to like people in uh, you know being a diplomat you just have to be uh, extravertic uh, you just have to uh, like people like talking to people like being with people because this is what our job is about you know yeah it's very people centric right it's exactly very people -centric. we are all the time you know or visiting somebody or being visited by somebody or uh, like um, attending some fairs some shows some meetings so like, like all the time all the time mm -hmm. even though the pandemic uh, was so maybe you know last year was a little bit slower but now everything starts again so we are all the time among different people, people we don't know. We are all the time meeting new people. So you just have to like it because otherwise you will not stand it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so very for, honest And you know, you. that's so funny because I was just like in this meeting, um, I, as you know, I work a little bit with American Express and we were talking about how the young people who are joining the company can really be comfortable with just going to talk to someone who they don't know for 15 minutes. And that's so interesting because you live in that like opposite space where people are scared to talk to strangers uh, and you literally have to do it over and over every single day, like a hundred people a day, right? Yes. So like, were you always confident or did, is that a skill that you had to learn along the way? Well, I think that you are learning for all your life. So you are mm -hmm. learning, um, um, you are, 
I've got a feeling that, you know, all the time I'm just like getting new skills and at this work all the time I'm just like um, growing mm -hmm. because all, there is like every country, every place give me the, uh, gives me the opportunity to, to grow more, to learn more and, and uh, to even to change because I think that all those experiences are changing you. So you, you as a person also, you, you are changing. Um, but um, it just make you, as I said, it, it, it makes you complete um, in a way. And um, I think, yes, you can learn it, but uh, you have to like it. Mm -hmm. Because there is nothing worse than, than, than you know, uh, just do not enjoy uh, the work like this. Because people feel it. People mm -hmm. see it, that you don't really want to talk to them, that you are not or you're uncomfortable with them, that you are not just... like a blank thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, this is, I, I think this is the skill uh, that I have, that I just know how to talk to people. I, I know how to communicate with people and I, I just love people. And uh, uh, I need people around me. This is what makes me alive. Uh, that's why, uh, I mean, this job, you know, being a diplomat, I think this is a job, a fantastic job for people who, who like other people, who like being with people, who enjoy communication, who enjoy, you know, like um, activities, who enjoy uh, unpredictable, because our mm -hmm. job is so much unpredictable, you know, there are all the time, you know, new things appearing Happening around now. us, and uh, they are so different, unpredictable, and uh, we just need to face those things, those, those you know, like changes. Uh, but um, that's fun. So as long as you treat it as a fun, as a challenge, as something that uh, you really like, then everything is fine. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yes. I, you, I, lo I love. I love. Like you know, that, yeah. I would say that if you are like, um, uh, if you if you are rather like uh, introvert, if you're rather uh, to to you know quietly work with numbers, or I mean, so just. Um, yeah, probably you will, you will not that, feel, right? <laughs> yes, you will not co feel comfortable here. I mean, I feel comfortable with numbers, but you know, uh, I don't enjoy them as much as I enjoy uh, working with uh, with I'm people sure with other nations. I'm sure being locked down in the house was probably a little bit of a struggle. So, <laughs> and now because you're so used to meeting people, right? But it was probably good because you got to spend some time with family. So yeah, well, uh, it it was. But on the other hand, you know, I just had to, uh, I have no idea if I really relaxed. Because there were so many things going on, like, you know, mm -hmm. online meetings, Zoom meetings, and this and that, that uh, I just uh, didn't feel that uh, that much locked, uh, to be honest, because there were just other challenges going on. So I attended exactly. some, some online exactly. classes and I started, you know, just uh, doing some other things that I didn't have time to yeah. do before. So yeah. this uh, pandemic was a tough time, but... Uh, but also, um, I think, um, well, we, we manage. You, you we manage. manage. We manage, exactly. And, and to be honest, stuff. from knowing you a little bit and now talking to you uh, today, you're that kind of a person that it's like, you know, you probably are not bored often. <laughs> you probably always have something happening. <laughs> yes, I've got always something to do. I never bored, you know. I'm actually running, always trying to catch up something. <laughs> it's just exactly, like, exactly, exactly. I, I have not enough time. My, my day should have 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> one day you'll be bored one day um one day so i have one more question for you um in regards to your career right so what we're gathering from what you said is that your career is very unpredictable your job right now right you have to adjust very quickly um and a lot of people out there in the world are used to jobs that are more structured right so you have goals for the quarter you check in with with your boss every wednesday blah 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 but your job is very different from that right so I feel like it's even more entrepreneurial. Like, so you're like an entrepreneur in a way of your own career. So how do you manage that? Like not having, or do you have structure or do you not? Like how well, do you manage the in, in a way, In job? a way we have, in a way we have some goals and we have got some, we have got structure, we have got goals and we have got uh, um, some things that, you know, we have to do. It's like at, at every work, you know, because I'm not on, like, I'm a diplomat. I'm also a consul. It means that, you know, I've got also my consular duties. Um, and uh, in a consulate, you know, we are helping Polish citizens. If something happens, uh, we are helping them. We are giving passports. We are giving visas. We are, you know, we've got also those kind of consular. So it is structure. But then in this business, in this, this uh, let's say, second uh, half of my work, which is like the, the business initiatives, um, well, I'm also trying to set up my goals. So, you know, there are companies that are coming to me that are first mm -hmm. were Polish companies at, at, attending. 
So, you know, for, for me, the most important is to, to work on a growth between Polish companies and, and Turkish companies. So for me, you know, like the numbers are important and uh, the exchange and the trade and the investments that are going on between both countries. Mm -hmm. So I, actually, this is what matters. And uh, this is where we are trying to do when I'm trying to set up my goals. Uh, we've got also, we are doing fairs, we are having meetings, we are organizing conferences, we are organizing webinars. So uh, this is exactly where we are. We are trying just to um, uh, have those, those goals. And uh, that keeps us, uh, keeps me very busy because every day I've got really something to do. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm, as I said, I'm always running and trying to catch up something. And there's <laughs> always something, you know, that I didn't manage to do this day. Uh, so like really uh, the, the, the time management is, is so important in my case. Mm -hmm. But about time management, you know, and I, I would like to tell you uh, three things because I think that I learned a lot in the U.S. I mean, the uh, mm -hmm. U.S. was really amazing experience for me. And uh, I, I, just, I just think that there are like very three important things that, that um, uh, was kind of a lecture for me. And definitely they are from the U.S. So the first, first thing that I learned there was that it's never too late for anything. Uh -huh. uh, because in Europe, you know, we tend to think that, oh, now you're 40 or now you're 50, you know, oh, it's you're too old, <laughs> you're too old, or you're 20, you're too old, or you're 30, you're too old. I mean, we tend to think that, you know, you are too old for something. Everything is just too old. It's like, you already messed it up. It's done. Exactly. Do and, it. and so, oh, why do you want to do this? You're too old for that. And what I liked about the US is that um, as long as you're alive, you can do anything. I mean... <laughs> I've got yeah. friends who are like 50, 60, you know, creating their first companies or they were just starting learning how to mm -hmm. play violin or play piano or just do anything like that. That was amazing, you know. So as long as you are alive, there is never too late for anything. Just I love that Do whatever so you want. And this is what I love about the US, that uh, there is like, uh, they allow themselves for all their life to do whatever they want. That it's never too late for anything. I love this approach. I love and it. It's like as long as you are walking, as long as you're healthy, as long as you can speak. You can do that, anything. You got it. Yeah. Exactly. This is, this is so fantastic. So I'm trying, you know, to, to you re really use this approach. Uh, this year I'm 41, uh, even though I think that I've got still so many things to do you know i mean i've got plans for at least another 50 years <laughs> you and... like me you know what people have anxiety because they're not moving along in life i have anxiety because i'm like oh my god i have so much to do in my whole life am i going to have time so that's so funny i feel the same way i understand <laughs> exactly yeah. so this is the first thing and then the second thing is that uh uh, you know, in, in Europe, I've got, I've got, you know, the feeling that people sometimes think that uh, if you don't, you can't show off, that you have to be quiet, that you have to sit in a corner and somebody will find you. And the truth is that nobody will never find you. I mean, you have to show off. Um, you have to just um, uh, show your skills. You have to know how to sell your skills. Without mm -hmm. that, you don't exist. So this is also very American way, you know, that they are very entrepreneurial and they are really showing uh, people that um, you have to show off. You have to have selling skills in order to sell your abilities, to, to sell yourself because you are like a product in a way. Yep. You are like a product who has to be um, promoted, you know. I'm always telling because I'm also a teacher. I'm also a university teacher back in Poland. I'm, I'm an uh, assistant professor at Warsaw School of Economics. So I'm always telling the students, uh, you yourself, you are one man company. And yes. you, you, inside, you have to have your uh, marketing department, uh, PR <laughs> department, but also uh, a control department, uh, management, uh, time management. I mean, you are managing your life. This is yes. like really serious company that you have. Mm -hmm. So you all also, in all those different departments that you have inside you, you have got also, you have to have your sales and marketing department uh, because you, you need to show that you can, you need to show that you are really good and uh, that, that you've got uh, those possibilities to, to, to act in, in, in many ways. So um, I, I love that you say that because it's like, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I'll just be here. I'll do a good job. People will find me. Like, no one will find you. Like, you have to go out there and just prove to the world who you are. And then people will 
find you because you are doing your thing. You know, you're selling yourself. You're taking the opportunities that、like、you mentioned in the beginning, and that's how it happens, right? Exactly. Like you can't、exactly. just sit in a corner and you know and manifest. You、exactly. know <laughs> that it will happen. Exactly. And you know, you really have to uh, uh, show. You have to show exactly what you have, and and、uh, also. You have to kind of uh, uh, plan uh, your、um, your fu- let's well I don't want to say plan your future but you have to have your goals in your mind you have to plan your goals you need to、uh, plan them step by step you need、mm-hmm. to really have in mind what you really want to achieve otherwise、um, you know、uh, you will get some one time you will get somewhere where you didn't really want to be. And why? Because you didn't have plan. You didn't know where you want to go.、Amazing. So this is also very important, you know, to have、uh, a plan or like a big, like let's say, big vision, big picture. But also, you know, like small steps that are leading you to this bigger, you know, event or bigger, bigger plan of your、uh, of your life. So this is、I、also. Yes, I I think this is also so important in your life. So, so there are, you know those things that、uh, I think were so、um, uh, like a good good lesson that、uh, I have、uh, learned from the US. It was、uh, so important for me, and、uh, I really like this kind of very American entrepreneurial approach. But、mm-hmm. this is the same. Uh, just, just, you know, you know what?、Uh, I think I need to because I see that I'm getting darker because you know it's getting、oh. darker. Here, here, here. Will you will just, disappear in a sec. <laughs> let I will just disappear for one one second. I will switch、uh, on the, the light. light. Okay, okay, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, the life is so funny, you guys. It's just like you know, things happen. All good. <laughs> Yay. Yes. So we have. Got, you will the, not the, disappear anymore. <laughs> yes. So、uh, because you know,、uh, in 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 Turkey, like the, the, there is like wow, different hour that we've got right now.、Uh, so it, it's like、uh, seven, nine, it's seven nine forty, right? It's, it's seven thirty seven now. Yes.、Uh, PM. So we are just like having night, and and you are just like in the middle of your day. So. <laughs> oh yes, for us it's twelve thirty. Yes, yes, yes. So I have a question. Was that the third thing, or you have one more thing? Uh, that was like the, the goal、yeah. thing was was the was the third thing like the the third thing was that actually you need to have this big picture of your life and you need to really、uh, have this goal because these goals will help you to、uh, go further to create the big image of your life. So the、mm-hmm. small steps and this this big step will really、uh, move you forward. So. As I said, it's never too late for 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 anything, and、uh, you have to show off. You have to have goals. So this is like really uh, uh, something what was、uh, very important、uh, to to learn from、mm-hmm. uh, from from the US. And、uh, I'm really glad that you know I had this opportunity to 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 see you know how those people are just really introducing that、um, in their lives. But I also have to say that、um, American citizens they are、um, they are entrepreneurial, but also Turkish people are very entrepreneurial. Really? Oh, yes. So that's another correlation between New York. Very, very, <laughs> and、uh, many people here they have got their own companies and、uh, they've got、uh, their own businesses and they are just thinking how to make business. Uh, and they are opening the companies, and they are just like selling something, buying something. It's just like、uh, there are many family businesses here. So I just find、uh, Turkish people very entrepreneurial. They are also very similar to to, to Polish people in a way,、uh, not the way of entrepreneurship, but in a way of、um, uh, uh, being very friendly and welcoming and、uh, being very. Open,、mm-hmm. so、uh, they are like、um, they, they are very much like us.、Uh, Turkish people are very close with their families, so family is so important. important yeah. Yes,、mm-hmm. uh, family is like the most important value in Turkey, and、uh, they are uh, really uh, appreciating the family members. They are really taking care of the family members.、Mm-hmm. So it is in a way、uh, we have it in Poland that we are taking care of our parents, grandparents. So it's exactly the same way it is here. It, I think that those.、Um, Family relations are even stronger, and、uh, mm-hmm. they are really very, very important for them. 
And that's uh, so interesting. That's so interesting that you say that because I feel like when people look and they're like, oh, I have to travel to this country and that country, they just look at like, this is how this country is different. But what you're saying is you've traveled to so many countries that at the end of the world, there's so many similarities. And there's more similarities than you would even ever think, right? You know what? The more I travel, uh, the more I've got a feeling that actually people all over the world are so much similar. I mean, we are all the same. Mm -hmm. And world is so similar. It's just, you know, the, the borders are only in our heads. So, uh, you know, people everywhere, you've got some nice people, some friendly people, everywhere you will have some less nice people. <laughs> but uh, in, in general, Very you know, diplomatic people, answer. <laughs> yes, but in, in general, you know, people are just people. We are, we are so similar. You know, people have got the same needs all over the world. Yeah. They've got the same thoughts. They've got the same, you know, feelings. And uh, they, they just need the same things, you know, everybody yeah, needs, uh, uh, needs safety, uh, happiness, uh, uh, everybody needs love, you know, it's just like, um, all over the world, the same. I stuff. love that. Nobody I love that. And that is, you know, yeah, and that is such a great way to just kind of like finish off like with this message. I, I love, 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 love that. But before we like go off, um, because we don't want to keep you on for too long. We have some more like quick questions. They're called rapid fire questions that Rahana put together and they're meant to be like fun and you can answer them in like a sentence or two. Um, so the first question is, um, what is your favorite childhood memory? Favorite childhood memory? Wow. <laughs> uh -oh. There is this is supposed to be like fun and quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, but, but there, there is so many of them. I mean, I have got many funny childhood uh, memory. Uh, the, the first that came to my mind, it was that I was five. So I was the age of my, 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 my child. And uh, I was actually just to be five. I was like four and a half. And I was asking my mom, mom, can I tell now that uh, I'm already five? <laughs> and I remember that my mom was saying, yes, you can say that you yeah, are already five. And I remember <laughs> it very much. And also another childhood memory was when my, uh, um, when my sister was born and we went to the hospital and they showed, uh, you know, it was like in a communism or a socialism, there was, you know, this window and they were going via this window, this, this child. Mm -hmm. And the nurse asked me, Oh, this is your sister. Do you like her? And I somehow knew that I can't say I don't uh, <laughs> because it would be rude. So I said like, mm. yeah. but I didn't really like the way she looked. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even I, then you were a diplomat. Look at that. I was, diplomat. Like, yes. I, was, I was three and a half and I was diplomat. And I remember that, you know, so much that I saw her, you know, in this window. And they yeah. were giving, and my mom and, and this nurse was showing me this baby, and I was thinking, oh my God, this is so rare. Yeah. Like, oh. You're I like, yeah, I love think... her. Look at that. She's so cute. Yeah, and then and they were like, she's so cute. Look at her. And I was like, oh. oh she... <laughs> that is the funniest thing ever. Um, the next question is, what is a cause that is like the most important to you? From like fuel empowerment, sustainability, I don't know, what would it be? Saving the oceans? What do you think is the most pressing, the most important? Uh, what is the most important right now to you that you would like think we you want to solve uh, saving the world I mean I think that we are getting into a huge eco disaster mm -hmm. so uh, this is what scares me and I'm, I'm, I'm really honest with you I feel really scared because I see what's going on in different countries I see how much polluted are the countries and uh, I see how many garbage we're producing and I mean, we could face this year actually clearly what's happening with Earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, the, the climate change is the fact. And uh, the question is how long it will take for ourselves as a human beings to really destroy ourselves. Because this is w where it leads to, you know, we are working for human, uh, um, for destroying of human, you know, like... Uh, humans in general for, for, for human beings yeah. because once you know the earth will be uh, not possible to live on you know it's it's over yeah and, exactly and, and and this is you know what I feel that uh, this is this is the the biggest problem of of uh, of the world right now uh, that we have to that we have the to solve problem for. with ecology because we are just killing ourselves yeah okay that's that's interesting so the, now we have a good like a, a positive question 
So who is one person that really inspired you along the way? Like a mentor, a family member? Like who is one person that they're like, they have my back or they taught me something very important? Well, I mean, um, uh, I think my parents, definitely. So my dad and my mom, they were definitely my mentors uh, and they are still for, for, for all my life because I learned so much from them. And uh, uh, they, they were the role models for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they still are. Uh, but then, you know, I just uh, really liked uh, watching and observing uh, these uh, women leaders like uh, Angela Merkel, like um, Margaret Thatcher, mm -hmm. so um, uh, um, Hillary Clinton. I mean, uh, I, just, uh, uh, I just watched the women leaders because I need, uh, I think that we need in the world have more women leaders. Uh, because uh, the time of men leaders uh, is over, and in my opinion, <laughs> official announcement to all the men tuning in. <laughs> and right now, we just need uh, women to take over because currently we need a world where everybody is really uh, taking care of the uh, society well-being and uh, stabilization of the society. We are not fighting anymore. Uh, for land, for oil, gas, or let's say less. That's why we need now women that will take care of the societies, that will take care of the world, that will with take compassion, care of the right? ecology. With compassion, yeah. Yes, because we've got different style of management, we've got different style of uh, uh, working with people. Uh, I'm, I'm very much pro women in business and women in politics and women as leaders. That's why I think that the uh, world nowadays needs more women on the highest positions. I love that. I love that so much. And the last question is um, also on a positive note. Where would you like to, if you could pack everything right now and you could live anywhere, where would you go? Oh, I don't think, uh, I, I didn't think about that. Uh, well, well, or well. maybe like one country that you would love to visit that you're just you that think so, that you haven't been to, to visit. before. Oh, you know what? I, I, I would love to go to Greenland, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think we have got post office <laughs> like we, we have got the, 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 the post, like diplomatic post there, not post yeah. office, but diplomatic post there. Uh, but there are so many countries I haven't been and I would like to visit. But uh, well, the next place uh, where we'd like to be, hmm. Maybe uh, uh, something in Asia or maybe Australia would be great. So yeah, they have so or many. Or maybe you head that... back to New York. <laughs> or maybe you know, maybe maybe. Or Washington D.C. is also great. There are many yes. many great places. Oh, <laughs> I think we lost Sabina for a second. Yes. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. I I went off before. So maybe we create a Greenland post. We'll see. Maybe we'll come back to us to New York. We'll see. Um, and anyway, we'll be sure to follow your, um, your story. Uh, just as we're closing off, thank you so much for this conversation. This was wonderful. Um, if you guys are tuning in a little late, we've been talking for about uh, 48 minutes now. So I will post it on my Instagram. We can rewatch it. It was a great conversation. Um, Sabina, like, where can we find you? How can we support your work? Well, so you can find me on Instagram and you can find me on Facebook. So I'm there. <laughs> Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here. I hope we can catch up one day in person. Uh, maybe, you know, if I visit Turkey or if you come to New York, we'll see. Uh, but yes, yeah, thank you please so, come. so much. Please, um, please come. As I told you, you know, Turkey is such an amazing place and uh, you would love it. And uh, Istanbul is really great, great city. So Justina, whenever you feel like, <laughs> just come and visit us here. Yes, yes, yes. Be careful what you wish for. I might be there tomorrow. <laughs> Just yeah. come, just come. Thank you. Thank you so much for the conversation. Um, and guys, rewatch it in a second. It'll be available on Instagram. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, Sabina. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good thank night. You, Justina. <laughs> thank, thank you. It was great meeting and thank you for this time. I had got great pleasure to talk to you and I would like to uh, say all the best to everybody. Just, uh, um, just uh, make sure that uh, you, your dreams are coming true. Yes, 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 exactly. And work hard. <laughs> and work hard. Thank yes. You. Exactly. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Justina. Bye-bye.